All right, y'all stand. We're gonna worship this morning. We're gonna start. We've got a little different service today, so we're gonna start us off. There's an echo in the spirit. If you listen closely, you'll hear it. Oh, what a sound. This broken shackles hit the floor. There's a symphony in the making. There is freedom here for the taking. Oh, what a sound. This broken people are restored. Let your praise be loud Here in your house Let your joy break out As our voices fill the room Do what only you can do Here in your house We're gonna worship you It's the same no matter the language Oh, what a sound as we unite to praise the Lord And oh, what a sound of your people singing Here in your house that you pray is in this place shout if you wanna shout if you wanna give him thanks surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place every blood bought saint come and praise his name surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place shout if you wanna shout if you wanna give him thanks surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place every blood bought saint come and praise his name surely the lord is Surely the Lord is in this place. Shout if you wanna, shout if you wanna give Him thanks. Surely the Lord is, surely the Lord is in this place. Every blood bought saint, come and praise His name. We've got, Jacob's going to do announcements for us this morning because dad's up doing the baptism stuff. So, Jacob, you may have to, there we go. I'll keep it on. I'll wear the guitar. Y'all don't care, do you? Uh, so it is baptism Sunday. And on the way up here, Cole, my son, was telling me, my, my, my middle son was telling me he was excited to be baptized this morning. So, Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm excited too. Proud of him and pr proud of him and proud for him. But anyway, so the announcements uh, tomorrow morning there is no men's Bible study, uh, and also there's no starting point class this week. And uh, you guys don't forget to pray for Israel. We know that um, the, the the church, the Christian church, is very much connected to Israel. 
you know, if you really dig into the Bible. Uh, so ways to give, on a different note, uh, you can put your uh, money, your cash or check, in the uh, boxes in the foyer, or you can give online, and you can do that at LVA Church on the website. Uh, is that lvachurch.com? Yeah, lvachurch.com. All right, on Wednesday, there's a women's Bible study. Uh, no, not, not Wednesday. I'm sorry, I saw a women's, and I thought Wednesday for some reason. <laughs> Women's Bible study tomorrow night at 6.30. If you need a book, see Beverly Britt. Uh, and then today after church, Venetia and Clint Armstrong's baby shower table is set up. It's set up in the foyer. And uh, she's also registered at Amazon. And you can visit the table in the fellowship hall or the QR code. or To see the QR code, yes. And you can scan that and it'll take you to the right link. Uh, who remembers Mega Sports Camp? Yeah. <laughs> Mega Sports Camp. Yeah. Okay, that is coming up, and uh, we need volunteers, and we also need kids to get registered for uh, Mega Sports Camp as well. You can register uh, the kids online, and uh, also, finally, we have the baby bottles campaign coming up. It starts on Mother's Day. Uh, Hope of the Delta. We've been doing that for several years. And uh, that will go through Father's Day. So get ready for that. Um, save, your, save your change. And uh, we'll make a contribution to that and uh, help those unborn babies. Okay. Now it's time to fellowship. You guys say hi. And uh, you don't have to buy somebody dinner or give them $100. But you can at least give them a handshake and a smile. Good morning. We're so glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. You look a lot different from right here. Amen. Do I? <laughs> I look thinner. Amen. Amen. I'm excited today. We have eight uh, people that have uh, wanted to be baptized. Some uh, recently gave their heart to the Lord. Some's been saved for a while. And we're excited about uh, what's going to happen uh, today in their lives, and not only just today, but uh, through the remaining of their life. And I'm such a, it's such a privilege to be able to uh, baptize uh, these folks here. We got uh, some guys and some gals today. Uh, and so I was going to say young and old, but uh, uh, she said watch it. So uh, I'm not going to say who it was. Uh, so, Amen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, today with our baptismal service. First, we have uh, Tammy Woods. Come on down here. Ooh. Is it cold? Tammy, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Paisley, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is one of those sweet girls right here. Yeah, they can see you. Sweetheart. Um, you want to say anything, Allie? <laughs> okay, yep. Allie, up on your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Now this is special to me. They're all special to me, but uh, being able to uh, dedicate your granddaughter to the Lord, see her involved in the church uh, every week and every day, and, and then come and, and be sure she thought that the Hispanic ministry, which had a baptism last Saturday, she thought that she was going to have to get baptized by the Hispanic ministry. And she told her mother, I want to be baptized by my papa. And so, amen. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to, to uh, baptize my granddaughter. Lexi, if you'll put your... Lexi, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. She's nervous. Angela, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John, upon your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want to give him a double dip. He didn't go all the way under and he stiffened up on me. I can say since I had my life right with the Lord, I'll say this much. It feels a heck of a lot better than what it used to, and I don't feel like the same person. Amen and praise the Lord. Greg, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. So if, you, if you know this, this family and know these kids, these are awesome young kids, and, uh, and parents will be commended, but I'm so proud of Cole of making this decision uh, on his own, and um, it's going to be a special day for him and his family. So you ready? Call upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Can you give them a great big hand clap of praise again? This is a good time. When people get saved and they get baptized, it's a good day in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen.
we forgot to do the pledge earlier, and I don't want any kids mad at me. So if y'all want to send the kids up, we'll do that real quick. Come on, TJ, lead us off. Got it, yeah. Take a sip, my son. Come this way. Tony, you want to help hold it, buddy? Is that everybody? Okay. Oh, wait, we got one more. Right hand over your heart. Ready? Oh, we got more? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. All right, are we ready? I pledge allegiance.
I know. 
Don't you get shy of me, lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Don't you get shy of me, lift up your soul Cause you've got a
We've all probably experienced times in our lives when we felt like we just hit a brick wall, you know? And even though we're, we're Christian and we know that God is right there and that God is faithful, sometimes we just feel like we're stuck. And like, what do we do next? How do we get out of this pit? And then something rises up within us. And we tell ourselves, you've got that inside of you. Just stand up and give Him praise. Stand up and tell Him that He's worthy. And let Him lead you. Even when it doesn't seem possible. Even when it seems like everything is against you. You've got what you need right inside you. So come on my soul. And don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise in this house. Lord, when we have nothing, Lord, we have a praise. Lord, when we have breath, we have a praise. Oh, at the end of our rope, we have a praise. Lord, when, we, when the night seems too long, we have a praise, Lord. And so we praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you in this house today, God. Oh, we magnify you in this house today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many have sensed the presence of the Lord in the house today? Amen. I believe God's doing something in some lives today. I believe that. Amen. Amen and amen. You got to praise you got to praise in you. Don't let it die. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Man, y'all are just awesome. Thank you to all of our teachers. Uh, Jason, your class is meeting in the, in the youth room this morning due to air conditioning issues. So um, if you're in Jason's class, that is um, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I believe. Just follow Mr. Jason, the not-so-handsome, bald-headed guy going out the back there. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. i tell you what, it's been a, an exciting weekend. It's been full it's been a full weekend so far uh, with, uh, with, with, with mishaps. And so uh, I, I, know the, uh, I know today has been awesome. Uh, God's Word is going to speak to you. Yeah. Uh, I believe we've been, been hammering through some things uh, this week. And uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to look at in, in a moment in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And I thought that since we had baptismal service this morning, um, we typically look at baptism as, a, as the, uh, somewhat of a starting point, and it is. It, it really starts at salvation when you confess with your mouth and believe in, uh, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that, that's when you're, you get saved. But we typically put a little note, if you will, by being baptized and starting our journey. So uh, I want to play off of the baptisms today with the Word of God and uh, how we should guard our hearts and how we should guard uh, uh, and how we should look at the Word of God, how it pertains to our lives. And so um, I think that uh, I believe the Lord laid this on my heart uh, specifically for this morning. You've heard this passage of Scripture. Uh, probably hundreds of times, and if you've been raised in church, probably maybe even thousands of times, um, it's a very popular uh, parable. Um, and, and remember that parables seem, it, it, it simply means to parallel, to go along beside, okay? That's, that's what it means. So uh, when, you, when Jesus always taught in parables, um, parables are something you can understand, you can, you can get down. You can get down right with it, and and uh, you you get a hold of it. Okay, and but sometimes parables are spoken and then they're explained. And today we're going to read one of those parables that is spoken, and then he explains it. So he wants you to get it. Amen. The Lord sometimes wants me to get stuff, and so it has to be plain English. Because my daddy used to say, "Plain English is plainly understood," and he knew how to speak plain English. Amen, somebody. 
no meant no, and you know, he was that, he was that very biblical guy, yay, let your yay be yay, and your nay be your nay. That was my dad, <clears throat> and uh, it was a yes, Lord. So, uh, <laughs> amen, let me get all of my stuff opened up here. Amen. Amen. I like that. At least they hear. You know, the worst feelings in the world would be a quiet church. Yeah. Void, listen, void of children's voices and having to repair stuff because we had kids tear something up. That is a bad church. Because, you know, if you got kids, that means, guess what? One of these days, you know, I tell people, one of these days you're not going to want me as your pastor now. Some of you say, I'm, at, I'm there. And so, no. <laughs> we're there, Pastor. Well, I'm going to get older one of these days, and I'm going to pass the baton. Guess what? If we're not raising up somebody beneath us, who are we going to pass it to? Hallelujah. Come on. So uh, I, I like to hear those feet and those screams and those hollers. I mean, not all the time. I ain't taking them home now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking any of them home. <laughs> Amen. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 4, I'm going to read the parable, and then we're going to talk about the parable explained. It says, um, what am I reading from up there? The New King James. Amen. Hunter has to keep me straight. <laughs> and when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. There's a lot of folks is what he's saying. There's a lot, a great multitude, um, not 50, 100, but a thousand, thousands. There was a great multitude. And a sower went out to sow seed, sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Uh, let me stop and say this. Um, it was just laying there. Okay? Um, if I was to put a seed on this right here and nobody move it, it would stay here for years and years and years in the form of a seed. It'd never do anything. It would just be a seed. We put it there. It's just there, period, because there's no moisture. There's no dirt. There's, there's nothing to activate. Come on, somebody. That seed to be its potential. Amen. Amen. And some fell on a rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered because it lacked moisture. Y'all following the picture, right? And some fell among thorns. Now, this is three types so far. Some fell am among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and it choked it. Number four, fourth type. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he said these things, he cried. Watch this now. now. If you're reading this, if you look at it in the red letter edition in, in King James, it says, and when he had cried these things, or when he had said these things, he cried. Watch this. He that he hath ears to let him hear. In other words, he, he cried out. If you've got ears, you need to hear this. You need to listen. If you've got ears, you need to grasp this. That's what he's saying here. That's what Jesus was saying in red letters. You need to get this. And then in verse 9, then his disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? They weren't getting a hold of it. That's why you get a hold of it, because you've heard it a hundred times or more. Now verse 10. And he said to this, Jesus speaking, he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest it is given in parables that they seeing may not see and hearing may not understand. And now this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. So what he's saying, he said, some, you get it because you're with me. But some's not getting it at all. But I'm going to explain it so all can get it. That make sense? Yeah. So now we start the explanation of the, of the passage of Scripture. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. 
Then the devil comes and takes away the word. Now, we know the seed is the word, all right? So in this, in this passage or this parable, the seed is always the word of God. It's not a word from God through somebody. It is the word of God. It is the written word of God that we're talking about, okay? So he says, so this word uh, has been, it's been planted. It's been sown in the first group. Then the devil comes and take away, takes away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved. These are people that have heard the word. They never got saved. It says in, if they would have kept it in their heart, they would have believed and been saved. So they've never been saved. Okay, you can come to church all of your life, sit in a pew, you can give tithes, you can, you can be on the worship team, you, you can be an usher, you can be a deacon and not be saved. And hear the word, amen? Next parable. But the ones on the rock are those who when they hear, Receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in a time of temptation fall away. They believe for a while that this word is true, it's correct, it's right, but they fall away. Things happen in life. We see that probably this type of person, if you will, come through the church doors more than any. Where they come in and they're so excited and then praise God, some of you 40 and 50 year old Christian saints throw a wet blanket on them because you don't want to have to do much and you don't want to have to keep up with them because they're so excited and they say, I don't want to do that. Come on, somebody. They get the word, they receive it and they believe it. Well, what happens? Something happens that they leave. I want to give you a definition, a couple of definitions here in this verse 13. The word believe means to, uh, it, the Greek word is uh, pistuo, and it's to think to be true, to be persuaded of, a place of confidence um, in a moral or religious reference. Watch this. Used in the New Testament of the conviction and trust to which a man is impelled by a certain inner and higher prerogative of the law of the soul. In other words, there's something outside the intellect that you believe this word to be true and you had confidence in it and you were going at it, but something happened. What happened? Don't answer the question. I'm going to answer for you a little bit. What happens? I mean, they, they came to church. That's those people that come to church for six months. You know, in the church world, in pastoral world uh, circles, they call it the revolving door syndrome, where people come, they stay for a while, and they go out, and then they're going nowhere else. That is an age-old question among Christian leaders. How do you stop the revolving door syndrome? Nobody yet has the answer. I have the answer. They have the answer, but I think we look over the answer. Now, I didn't come up with this because it's always been here. I'm giving you my take on this that I think I know how to keep the revolving door closed. You want to know? Yes. It's called major intensive uh, excruciating discipleship program. Because, look, these people already believed the word was preached and they believed it. They received it. Insomuch so they had confidence in it. What happened? Look, let's look at, can we pull it back up? Look at the latter part of the verse. But they have, they believe that received the word with joy and these have no root. Who believe for a while. See, the root system comes with discipleship, discipline. It says that, who believe for a while and in a time of temptation fall away. So what happened? They got past the ooey gooey and the goosebumps and the yoo-hoos and the yahoos. And when hard times come, they, they said, well, I, 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 that preacher preached to me a false gospel. I don't think he preached a false gospel because he said you believed it and you, were con you, were, you had confidence in it. That's the word of God. Yep. Somewhere in here there was no discipleship that says maybe that preacher was a feel-good preacher. 
everything's going to turn out fine. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's a lie. Everything is not going to be rosy in your life if you believe and if you have confidence in it. There's still going to be trials and tribulations. We understand that from God's word. He said, count it all joy when you fall into trials and temptations, persecutions. I don't like that. The church doesn't like to hear that. That's not a come to Jesus kind of message. Do you hear what I'm saying? People today, look, they've, they're filled with problems and issues and, and things going on in their life. Most of us by dumb decisions. Come on, can I get a witness? And we make these uh, decisions and then we come to church and, and somebody says, if you just get saved, you're going to feel so good all the time. Everything's going to be good. God's going to take care of you and da, da, da. He's going to take care of you, but that doesn't mean you're not going to go through stuff. Doesn't mean you might not break your leg. Doesn't mean you might not get sick. Doesn't mean you might not get cancer or another disease. Come on. But it does mean that he'll always be there with you. His word says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Let me move on a little bit. Also, this word, uh, see it says, and they fall away, the last uh, word, and they fall away in a temptation. What is this word fall away? The, the, the Greek uh, word is, um, it's, a, it's a preposition and, it's, and it means to separate. You could also use the word uh, desert. Anybody ever been in a desert? Um, I've been in a real desert before. And I'm thinking, the only thing this place on earth is good for is to hold this part of the world and that part of the world together. I mean, there's just nothing there. It's just a desert, deserted place. That's what fall away here means. It also means, watch this, any kind of separation of one thing from another by which the union or fellowship of two is destroyed. So when you get saved, you come in union or fellowship with God's word. Amen. Hello, you believed it, you had confidence in it, you, you trusted that this was it. Amen. But something happened that caused you to have a, um, a, a breaking, a separation of the union of the word and your spirit. There was something that happened that broke fellowship between you and the word, your spirit and the word. Come on, somebody. I'm going somewhere. Something happens. We see it all the time. How many of you, you can raise your hands. How many of you know somebody that came into a church somewhere, God saved, and you thought, man, they've got it, and then a year later, they're not in church anywhere. How many, if everybody's honest, you can, everybody can raise their hand. Something happened. I'm showing you what God's word said. There's a problem, and it's up to us as Christians to say, what is this problem? What causes us, all the work we do to witness to someone, to live a godly life in front of them, beg them to come to church, preach the word to them, do all these things, talk to them, and they get finally get saved after a year or two or six months? And you think, finally, whoo, let me move on to the next one, and I'll work on them, and then you turn around, and they're completely out of God's Will. They have broken union and fellowship. I'm speaking to all of us in this room, but I'm specifically speaking to those who got baptized this morning too. You're on a new journey. You, you are now in union and fellowship, not because you got baptized, come on somebody, because you got saved. And you're in a, in a, in a fellowship now. Watch, be watchful. Jesus said, I mean, the Bible says that, that he cried out loud, not, not cried tears, but cried out loud. If you got an ear, you need to hear this. You need to get this in your spirit because there's an enemy coming to create a separation. A separation of fellowship. It's easily done in today's world. You cannot do anything wrong. I'm going to pick on somebody or preach at you or something. You can do nothing. You can keep the first 10 commandments. All the 10 commandments. You know, you don't have to keep 613, obviously. You can keep the 10 commandments and I'm doing good. 
and be not, not be separated, not break union. But you can take this for four or five hours a day, uh, Facebook, and, and, uh, and I'm not against those things. I'm on Facebook. Uh, uh, Facebook, and, and it's not uh, a Twitter anymore. It's X, isn't it? I don't know what that means. X and, and TikTok. Come on, somebody. Uh, all those, they take your time. And the next thing you know, you're saying, I'm just too tired to read God's word. He understands. I got a question. Does he? Does, does, does he really? He knows why, but does he understand that you, you believed and you had confidence and you trusted in this, and now some of this stuff that is just, just, just crazy, most of it, has taken the time away, your brand new Christian has taken your time away from him? Does he really understand that? Oh, he's God. He understands everything. But does he, does he in, in our simple uh, simplicity of thinking, does he really understand why? I mean, if he gave you the best, what, it's like, how could you do that? Why would you allow that into your life? Why would you allow something to come in to break fellowship? I'm telling you right now, if someone came into my life and started, um, uh, I don't know what the term is now, but started, you used to, we used to call it hitting on my wife, you know, flirting with my wife, you think I'm going to stand back and say, oh, there ain't nothing to it. No, I'm going to say, hey, we got a problem, bud. Me and you have a problem. You're trying to break union and fellowship with me and my wife. We ain't married. I got to get, I got to. You're trying to break fellowship. We got to do something different. We ain't that church. Come on, somebody. You're trying to break fellowship. You're trying to break this union. And, and, and if I just sit back and say, oh, it's all right. It's just one, one little old thing. It starts with one little old thing. Every person I've ever talked to that's ever had an affair, it started with some one little thing. They just didn't show up and hook up. It started with some little thing. You had a fight with your honey and you go to work and some woman batted her eyes and shook her hair at you. And somewhere in your ignorant, crazy mind, men, you said, huh, I think she wants me. <laughs> and you start talking to her, sending her emails. And they say, you know, you're going to lunch during the day. Nothing, j just business, honey. Come on, you see where I'm going. Yeah. That one little thing would break fellowship. What's that one little thing that breaks fellowship with you and God in his word? Oh, it just doesn't happen. It's one little thing. Oh, I'm running late. Me and Jacob, where you at, Jacob? We talked about this morning. Hey, sometimes I oversleep sometimes. Sometimes, it's a look, sometimes I don't get up till 5.30 or 6. I oversleep. Amen. And I get in a rush, and, but I make this a point because I read and study in the mornings. But if I happen to get up at 6.30 or a quarter to 7 and say, oh, man, i got to be somewhere, what I do is this so, so I can keep my habit. As I, I flip to Psalms or Proverbs, and I at least read one of those, just one verse, because, see, it keeps me in my habit to know, uh-uh, there's nothing still in this spot. You may have stole a lot of the spot, but you ain't still in the spot. Right. You know what? When I go back home the next, I'll, the next morning, I'll make sure my alarm's on. Because I won't let the devil steal that from me. Amen. Why? Because I have confidence in it. It's special to me. I love it. It's going to get me where I want to be when I die. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's going to help me while I live. Amen. That's what yeah. this word does. So let me look at a couple other things. So, All right, so <clears throat> hallelujah. Where are we at here? Uh, I got one other thing I want to tell you about this. Uh, I'm going to read the last part of the verse. It says, and in a time of temptation, fall away. Has anybody in this room ever had a temptation come your way of any sort type thing? Okay. If you don't raise your hand, you're, you're, you're liars. Okay, you're just liars. 
Amen. You say, Pastor, I've never been tempted like that to look at another woman. I ain't talking about that. Have you ever been tempted to say something you knew you should have kept your mouth closed about? I was tempted this morning, wasn't I, staff people? Yes, sir. I rest my case. Verse 14. Now, if, if you're reading in the red letter edition, this is all red letter, by the way. And that which fell among the thorns are those who, when they heard, go out and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. That's kind of like the group we just talked about. They kind of get in and, and they think they're going to, but they, there's no fruit. How many of you know the Bible says you'll be known by your what? Fruit. Fruit. These people right here, in, in, in my limited theological opinion, they really weren't saved. They heard, but you can hear and not be saved. When I was growing up, I could hear my daddy and not do what he told me. Come on. Once, then I got saved, okay? And <laughs> he helped me believe. So these people, they hear, and then they get choked by the cares, the riches, and pleasures of life. That's doing life. Are, are you tracking with me? That means you're just doing life. You go to church, and you hear it, but they're just choked out, and you just show up because it's what you do, and there's no fruit with you, and in the life just, I, I can't go this week, and I can't go next week, and I'm out seven weeks, and I just can't go, and my job, and all this. Well, get another job. He said, Pastor, you ain't been in my shoes. I've been in your shoes. I guarantee it. I've been so broke I couldn't rub two quarters together because I didn't have them. Amen. I've been so broke I've looked for change in the console to put a dollar and a quarter in the gas tank. Come on, somebody. I've been there. I needed jobs, but I never let my jobs come in front of me and the Lord. I was saved when I went broke too, by the way. I'm still saved that I ain't broke no more. Because he's good. Because the Bible says it's God that gives us the power to get wealth. Not me. Not you. Verse 15. But that on good ground. Yeah. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart keep it and bear fruit. What's bear fruit with what? That, that, that word patience is, 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 is not, what you, not really what you think. It, it is that there's trials and times, but patient means over time. Okay, so it's kind of a two, two, two-edged sword. It, it is patience like, you know, my mama said never pray for patience. What did I do? I quit real quick, okay? It doesn't take me long. I'm a quick learner. But it means over time. So let's read it again in the last part. It says, so, so the noble heart, you've heard the word with your ears. You have a, a noble heart. In other words, your heart is open and receptive to say, what is this word? And it gets into your heart. And then what do you do? Here's the key. You keep it. This is the only place in this passage of scripture, in this parable, where it says to keep it. What happened with those who lost it? They didn't keep it. Something happened in them getting the word in their heart and they fell away. What happened in between getting it in their heart and the falling away? This two little, these two words, keep it. You, you have to keep the word of God in your heart. We're talking about the word. The word must be kept in your heart. Well, how do you get it? How do you, you hear it? You read it, you study it, you listen to podcasts or whatever it is y'all do now. Uh, I think that's what we call podcasts. And, 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 and so you, we used to listen to cassettes. 
How many of you had a cassette player and you'd go to a revival and somebody, and they had their cassettes out back and you could buy one or volume and you'd open it up and it was the case, took up a whole front seat? 92 volumes of a preacher preaching. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. We put it on podcast. We put it on the internet where you can go and listen to it. Something happened, though, with the group of, the group of people that fell away from the word and these that kept the word. And that thing is that they kept it. It's important for me to read God's word daily. If you don't think it's important for me, you ask my wife. It's important that I study God's word so I know how to be a good husband. See, I should be a good husband before I'm a good pastor. I should be a good husband before I'm a good person to the world. She should be number one in my life, not number two or three or four, number one. And I've got to read my word to know how to, to be a good husband. You've got to read your word and know how to be a good Christian. If you're just letting people tell you all the time and that's all the information you're getting, you're going to get different opinions all across the building. On, on any one particular subject, you'll get different opinions on how you should react, how you should handle this situation. What about God's word? Do we believe God's word to be true? It's that thing we can have confidence in. We read that a while ago in, in the definition. It's something you can have confidence in. So if I can have confidence in it and, and know that it to be true, that's what we should follow. So why do most Christians not follow that? You know, there's a poll out that's been out for some time, four or five years, that over 50% of Christians don't read their Bible one time a week. <laughs> That'd be like saying I'm married to my wife and go home once a month. Yeah, that ain't gonna last long. About a month. Maybe not even that long. Maybe about a day. She's gonna say, where are you at? Well, I decided I'm just gonna hang out over here at Joe's house. Um, well, I'm thinking you're gonna need to come home because this is not gonna work for me. You married me, not Joe. Amen. I don't care how good a friend Joe is. You're coming home. And when you get home, we're going to talk about why you're even thinking about this. See, we need to, we need to approach God's word and it being precious just the same way of that illustration I just gave you. If I'm away from God's word, why is this? What's holding me up? Why, why am I not able to read God's word? What's the problem? I can only read God's word once a week. 50% of Christians. I pray that we're in the upper 50 here. Come on, somebody. In that same verse, in verse 15, the latter part of it, it says, and they keep it and they bear fruit with patience. In other words, over time, they're going to continually turn out good fruit. How many of you have fruit trees in your yard? How many do you, do you produce some fruit or have a, so, so we got a few. How many of you have ever taken really good care of the tree and you've done the pruning and all the stuff you do to those and you, you fertilize it and you, man, you man, this year we're going to have a bumper crop of cherries or plums or apples or whatever. And, and it comes time for those to start budding up. It's, man, it looks so good. They're budding so beautiful. And you're talking, man, I can't wait. I just can't wait for those that apples to get ready or those peaches so we can make some jam. Put on some Texas toast with butter. Make a sandwich. Come on, somebody. And your fruit tree doesn't produce. It's disappointing. Right? I had pecan trees in the yard, 13 of them. They disappointed me one too many years. <laughs> Ask me how many pecan trees I have in my yard now. Zero. Zero. I was tired of disappointment. They were bearing no fruit. They were causing me a lot of work. I'm going to preach. They were causing me a lot of work because pecan trees drop a lot of limbs. I'm not a limb picker-upper. 
I'm like Ralph, we got this deal. If it'll go under it, it'll come out of it. Talking about a mower. I said, no, I won't have anything that causes me a lot of work that produces me nothing in my life, including a pecan tree. They're cut down in a pile. We're going to burn them this year, Blade. Why do we allow things in our lives that cause us a lot of stress and heartache and problems and pain that cause no fruit to be given to us and that we can't be fruitful through? Why do we allow those things? What are those things in your life? Yours will be different from mine. Mine will be different from yours. But there's things in our life that cause us to be unproductive for Christ. It's the cares. The Bible said it's the cares of the world, the riches of the world. They choke this thing out. This is not rocket science. But there does require, it does require a huge amount of discipline. Do you know discipleship, the root word of discipleship is discipline? I don't like that word. Because most of the time when my daddy said something, I was being disciplined. And he got to the root of the problem. Which caused, when the root of the problem was changed, caused us to be more productive in the right manner. But since we are holy before God, we think we're all good. It's them. This is not going to hurt me. I've been a Christian for 30 years. I'm sorry you don't have immunity because of the time length you've been a Christian. Well, glory. Let's look at verse 16. Now, most people separate these two, but it is still part of the parable, actually. It talks about another thing he gives us a relation to, but it's all really related to this passage of the last, in verse 15. And I want to read that again before I go into verse 16. So let's read it so we have it. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and a good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Now we jump into verse 16. If you have a Bible, it's probably a um, uh, subheading of uh, the, the parable of the lamp or the lampstand, something of that nature. But it's still in the same context. Watch. No one, when he has lit a lamp, uh, what, what do you lit a lamp? Uh, had the word put in his heart, got it in there, deep in there, that good word. No one, when he's lit the lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed. But he sits it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. The Bible says that you're uh, overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. That you can be overcomers. You don't get saved to sit down and do nothing. You get saved to be fruitful so that you can produce more fruit. So, next verse. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. In other words, when the word of God gets in you, and if you're really seeking the Lord, those things that keep you uh, from keeping the word will come to your attention. Come on, somebody. They will come to your attention just like that light lights up a room. I walk in here sometimes and from the sunshine, and even though we got these little lights here, uh, it, you close the doors and I walk in here from outside and you know how your eyes are adjusting? Yeah. And I know where these chairs are. They've been in this same, same place for, I've been, well, I've been here 13 years. They've been in the same spot. I can walk in and start doing this till my eyes get adjusted. <laughs> Cut the light on and say, oh, there they are right there. I knew it was there. You know that the enemy's there. You know he's trying to steal the stuff from you. God's word, it says it. You need to cut some light on. Reveal those things that's taking your time and your attention and your Bible reading away from God. There's something that that causes us to fall away. Time management is key. 
Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? I said time management. We had a class one time that back here in the back when I first got here and we were doing leadership. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out eight hours for work and eight hours for sleep. That's 16 hours out of a 24-hour day. And then I want, to write, I want you to write down what you do the rest of the day. So we did that. And one person raised their hand and said, uh, th this is not right. Okay, well, why not? Because I do more stuff than time allows me to do on this paper. <laughs> this is a true story. I said, well, that's not possible. It is. No. No. Well, I know I do this, this, and this. I'm not saying you don't do this, this, and this. I'm just telling you, you got too many minutes by each one of those things because you're only allowed 24 hours in one day just like me. Now, you may be thinking you're doing more than you are, but you're not. You may be thinking you're spending more time here, but you're really not because you just have 24 hours. It's amazing when you really get people to see that. Then they start saying, well, you know, that, that, that's probably, and, and, you get, and all of a sudden, that same person had like an hour and a half left over in a day. And people tell me, Pastor, I am just too busy to read my word. Liar. If you were too busy to read your word, answer me a few questions. Where are you on TikTok? Where are you on Facebook? F Facebook? Where are you? Uh, what are you uh, I don't know, we used to call it tweeting, but now it's, what is it, Xing? Where are you Instagramming? Is that right? Snapchat. Snapchatting. Were you snapping? Okay. What, what were you doing? Did you do that all day? Did you watch television for a couple of hours? And say, whew, I'm just too tired. The Lord knows my heart. Sure does. You want to be careful making that statement. He does know your heart. He knows your heart. Every little corner of it. Be careful making that statement. Amen. I'm preaching and you ain't liking it. Next, next verse. That verse 18, therefore take heed how you hear, for whoever, ha whoever has to him will be given more or be given, and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken away from him. What is that really saying? So watch this. Therefore take heed how you hear. So a while ago we were talking about how people heard the word in the first part of the, the other parable we talk about. What were they doing? They were hearing the word. They were receiving the word. It's a, and he says, therefore, take heed how you hear. In other words, take heed. Don't forget your Bible time. Don't forget to set it aside. For whoever has, to him will be given. Watch this. If you spend more time in this, you're going to get smarter in God's word. You're going to draw closer to him. If you don't spend time in this and you don't get in God's word, guess what you're going to do? And whoever does not have, in other words, who does not make time for this, who does not make time for God, even what he seems to have, what he seems to have, the falling away, come on, will be taken from him. Watch this. If you, um, I don't go to the gymnasium. Come on, somebody, can I get a witness? The Bible says that bodily exercise profiteth little, and I'm with it, okay? <laughs> Can I tell you a little story real quick? I, I got two minutes, and I'm, I'm going to wrap up. So I went to my nurse practitioner this week, and she said, Marty, uh, you've lost the great news. You've lost three pounds. I said, I have? <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> she said, yeah, last year you were at 233. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I'm at 230. I said, well, technically, it's not right. She said, huh? I said, technically it's not right because like four or five months ago, I was at 222, so I really gained weight. <laughs> she said, well, I'm really not talking about that. Really, I need to talk to you about your blood pressure. It's a little high. I said, she said, I know you say it's normal. It is normal for me. It's, I'm just normal, okay? Everybody else is not normal. <laughs> she said, but I'm, I'm worried about the long-term effects of your high blood pressure, your liver, and all this. I said, okay. Well, how much, how, how much time do we have here? You know, I'm thinking I'm in a death sentence. And I said, so what I need to do? She said to your pastor, you need to cut out Cokes. I said, praise God, I don't drink Cokes. What about Dr. Peppers? <laughs> she said, 
Doesn't matter. They got sodium in them. When you get your sodium down, I said, I said, is that it? I mean, I mean, how many can I have? And she said, none. I said, no, you didn't understand my question. I said, how many Dr. Peppers can I have? She said, I'm telling you zero. My response was, since I'm paying her, I'm going to drink a Dr. Pepper. How many do you think would be okay for me to have? Her response, zero. I wanted to text her the next day and say, I had no Dr. Peppers, but I ate four Little Debbie honey buns. I didn't. She also went on to tell me this, and I'm making a point. I'm going to close. She also went on to tell me this, that you could have no this four-letter word, pork. That's what I said. My response was, what kind of pork? She said, first thing out of her mouth, bacon. We have a problem. Fried uh, pork chops. I said, oh, I had one of those yesterday for lunch. She said, pork roast, anything pork. She said, or I could put you on more medicine. I said, how much more? <laughs> Here, I'm, I'm, my, my, point, my point is this. I heard, come on somebody. I heard what a medical professional told me. Come on, doctor, it's your amen moment. You, I, I heard what the medical professional told me. It's in my heart. I remember it so much. I just told you about it, and that was Tuesday. I remember every word, especially the pork thing, okay, and the Dr. Pepper thing. I, don't ha- I do not have to. They never had to follow your advice, did you, when you were in the medical? They, they, you, you're just saying, I'm here for your best interest. You can do whatever. I'm going to charge you anyway. Come on, somebody. I'm going to the house with your money. And I'm going to make more of it if you don't do what I say because you're going to be back. I heard what she had said. It went into, watch me, it went into my spirit. Now it's up to me to do something with it. I can continue to be a good looking 230 pounds that loves little Debbie's needs pork and Dr. Peppers. (laughs) And dies at 67. Or, I might die at 62. I'm not speaking anything of my life. Don't get me wrong. I'm just giving you a, a story. But I could do what the health professional says and might live to be 95 or 100 because of things, the effects that the high blood pressure has long term. She's not talking about me going to die tomorrow. She's saying, I'm talking long term, Marty. She loves me. She was in my youth group when I was her youth pastor. Come on, somebody. I was with her when she was led to the Lord. Amen. She loves me. She has her my best interest at heart. She spoke truth to me. I haven't heeded that yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. Come on, somebody. I'm working on it. My point is, we treat God's word the same way. We hear preachers come in. We hear your, your pastor comes in every week and preaches you to the best of his ability the word of God. What you do with it when you leave here is your business. It's not going to affect anybody but you and those around you. Come on, somebody. Let me finish. Next verse. I think we've got a couple more, don't we? 18, that's all I gave you. Amen. So do you want more of God's word or not? If you don't use what you got, you lose it. That's why they have rehab for muscles. And we ever had a, something you had to go to rehab and relearn to walk and stuff. You know why? Because you didn't use that. And it got smaller and smaller and smaller. And after a while, it just wouldn't work. Your faith in God's word is the same way. If you don't increase it, guess what? It gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you're thinking, you know, oh, that verse, oh, my goodness. And, and somebody comes to you, and they want to talk about the Lord, and you ain't read your Bible in six months, and, and they thought you was a good Christian because it seems to be. And they're asking you something. You think, oh, that verse, what was that verse? Oh, my Lord, Jesus, what was it? Have you ever been in those times where you're reading your Bible, and you're fast, you're seeking God, and, man, they just start popping out everywhere. They're just everywhere. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, I nailed that one. Okay, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. My whole point is this. Let's help these people that got 
baptized today. Keep it. And along the way, watch me, and I'm going to close. And along the way, you work on keeping it. Come on, you keep it. I, I, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about you keep God's word in your heart. You keep God's word in your heart. You don't have to worry about being saved. Come on, somebody. Oh, this is good stuff. Will you stand with me all across this building? If I could, can I get those that were baptized? Can I get you to can I get you to come up front? I didn't tell you we were gonna do this, but I don't want you to come up front uh, here. I wanna I wanna pray over you. Um, and our church body is gonna pray over you. Yeah, please. If I can get all, all 92 of you, um, we had we had eight, man. That was awesome. We had eight. Yeah, we can get them because it's it's time to go. Could somebody get those for me? Uh, tell them to come on down here. We want to pray over them. Like I say this is kind of one of those impromptu kind of things, but we're okay. Give me a high five, Scott. You've done a great job this morning, man. Amen. What did you do? Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, while we're waiting on these, let me tell you some fun stuff that happened today. So we, 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 uh, we were at a wedding last night, and it got delayed because of rain. It was a beautiful day, and then it started raining. So we were an hour behind, got here about 10 o'clock. So we get over here, and I'm, I'm working on the baptistry. I uh, did that yesterday, and, and it had a little leak, and I kind of got it fixed. And, and so we, we got here, and I checked it again last night about 930, and we're waiting on some kids. So, uh, and, and everything's good, and, and, and I checked it this morning, and everything's good. Sam comes in and says, Daddy. You know, we got a bad leak in the baptistry. I go in there and it's just dripping on our equipment. We didn't sprung another leak. Come on. So early this morning while you were getting out of your sleepy zone, I was already getting baptized and had to get in there and put some bags in some drains to keep it from leaking as bad. And, and everything just went wrong. Do you hear me? I mean, it was just going south. But I know one thing. We didn't let persecutions and trials. We could have said, we're going to baptize next week. But we didn't. Because I think, hey, y'all come this way. Y'all just, yeah, just slide on around here a little bit. We will. And uh, here, won't y'all step out here a little bit? Come on, come on, come on. Hey, can I get some of my, my people to come up? We're going to pray for them. You can turn around. I want you to turn around and look at me. Can we get some people in behind these and we pray for these? Get some men, some women. There's my girl right there. Come on. Come on. We're going to get some guys in here. Amen. We're going to pray that what happened today is just a starting point, that it culminates from here, that it grows and grows and grows and it continues to grow in you. This Watch this. This excitement, the enthusiasm for not only God, but his word for the things that's related. Serving. We need you serving. We need, this is what happens when you get saved. Amen. When you get involved, guess what? You get more involved. And the more you get involved, you get more involved. That's the way it works. Amen. So we're going to pray with you. If you want to, will you just stretch your hands this way and we're going to pray over these and we're going to bless them. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that every one of these young people, Lord, that got baptized this morning, Lord, already professed their faith in you, God. Lord, I pray that the enemy wouldn't come and try to steal from them. Lord, that they would have the, the holy unction, Lord, to recognize and to see and to notice Lord, when the enemy is trying to slip in. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just, that you would just touch them. Lord, have, give them revelation, Lord. Help them to see with spiritual eyes, God, the things when the enemy tries to, to steal their time, Lord, to steal their joy. Lord, I pray that you would just minister to them today, God. Lord, and not only today, but as they go forward. And I pray you bless them. Lord, that you would raise up workers and you'd raise up kingdom-minded people among these this morning, Father. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for the opportunity to baptize all of these people in the name of Jesus. And everyone says amen and amen. Hey, love on these. Tell them how proud you are of them that they made this choice today.